response predictor in immuno-oncologic therapy. Well, indeed, the topic of my research is quite a practical. This is PDL, uh, PDL1 as biomarker. And I would like to now to focus on a, num a couple of uh, fundamental clinical issues. As any biomarker PDL can be either used or not used, and this is responsible for its specificity. This, and therefore, I'm not sure that all these tests will be just exciting for clinicists. So may I choose a different approach? and draw a different perspective because indeed pdl1 is we know where the story starts but we don't know where it ends to be able to answer it question we should look at the role of immunotherapy and actually why the next nobel prize will be awarded for immunotherapy we must understand today that current approaches in immunotherapy are based on our knowledge of T lymphocyte physiology and not B lymphocytes or antigen representing lymphocytes. T lymphocytes have a very unique specificity to a broad array of antigens. Uh, they are able to uh, to change together with the uh, tumor. And of course, this is memory also. Uh, with immune responses that develop in patients with the third and fourth stages, we see some clinical effect. And therefore, there are patients who survive for five, 10 years, which is impossible in other therapeutic modalities. Oh, this results in a resistant, durable clinical therapeutic effect and better survival. Well, indeed, T lymphocytes are subject to two factors. Those are activating uh, molecules and inhibitory molecules. They, uh, pre they generate negative response and also suppress some other reactions. Now we have two uh, medications to two inhibitors because they are directly related to the potential of the tumor to resist the immune attack. These two molecules interfere at different stages of immune response. So we are going to focus on the PD L1 axis when there is an immune response already and when all the uh, T lymphocyte specific clones are there. So this means that this is efficient not only for all types of patients but even not for all patients because some patients have the first stage with the cytotoxic response is not is unformed. But with time, immune system generates, becomes tired of these, these attacks. And this can be both at the very initial stage as a result of gen amplification when the majority of tumors, over 90%, have this inhibitory access. But it can also accumulate in the process of evolution of the immune system as a result of demethylation of pdl one gen. And then the immune system cannot trigger a proper response. So this picture shows the fatigue of the immune system. We see the red color are pdl positive tumor cells. The speaker isn't talking into the mic, very poor hearing in the headphones. Non-apoptotic, and there is no secre excretion of cytotoxic molecules. 
so as to eliminate this immune fatigue. This is the task of uh, PDL1 therapy, so as and to provide some predictive factors that could show in which patient this therapy will be successful and in which not. As for PD-1, we don't have any efficient antibodies that would be enough sensitive as for PDL one There are such antibodies indeed. For both types of medications, for PD-1 or anti-PD, we can result to one of the same molecule to predict the clinical response. But indeed, problems emerged at the very beginning. Whatever the test and whatever its sensitivity and whatever the positive threshold, anyway, this test is bound to be challenged in terms of specificity and sensitivity. Looking at patients with a high level of PD. L1 expression, but we are not speaking about the non-small lung sensor, then what we can see is that the response rate, according to RESIST criteria, is 45% only, which is inadequate for immunotherapy. The survival median is not achieved, whereas in patients with a high PD-L1 expression, on tumor, it is no more than 80 uh, percent. Renal lymphoma is takes the top position, 80 percent response to therapy. Despite the hyperexpression of the gene and its amplification, it does not respond to immunotherapy. Therefore, the specificity of this test is far from being ideal. Looking at 50% of tumor cells, approximately 20% of them will be beyond, below this threshold. If the sensitivity threshold is 1%, then approximately 1% of tumors are below this threshold, which means that they don't have a visible expression. And, and indeed, this is a huge challenge which we must be aware of when we are doing pharmacodiagnostics. Whatever the test, whatever the design of the test, we are bound to have false negative and false positive results. Therefore, the future says that we compels us to come up with some extra tests the 8 to 10 PDO negative tumor patients will respond to this therapy. And our task is to move them to the group of patients that will be subject to this treatment. But this is not only about lung cancer, but if we look at other research in melanoma, head and neck cancer, gall bladder cancer and bladder cancer, cystic bladder cancer, approximately 20 to 30 percent will respond to this therapy. If we look at a selective group, this increases to 50 or even 86 percent. However, in PDO negative group, whatever the positive percent, whatever the test, there will be anyway large share of patients that will not go beyond 10 percent and will anyway respond to this therapy. Therefore, it is very important for us to understand what are these tests, the tests that we have about. FDA introduced new terminology for biomarkers. We always had companion diagnostics. A herceptine for a breast cancer and pembrolizumab, the PDL1 for pembrolizumab. 
But also we had complementary diagnostics. This is a non-obligatory therapy, but it allows us to assess the benefits and the risks. This, is, this includes the immunogister chemical test that allows us to outline the group of patients that are going to effectively respond to this therapy and, other, and the group of patients that will not respond to this therapy. Therefore, indeed, these tests are, this is what makes these tests very different from what used to be before in when the uh, sensitivity of the test was higher. Whereas the such transitory marker as PDL1 is just an, an accessory diagnostics in tumors. Therefore, it is highly important to know what do we, what do we use because everything depends on the quality of the test, including false negative and false positive results and the analytical and clinical validity of the test. So today we have three options. One of them for pembrolizumab to identify the potential sensitivity. This is the test with uh, this is the clone antibodies. This test was produced by DAC company and it is fully complete, which is a good thing because every percent of positive and negative patients distorts the efficiency of the therapy. Therefore, the more strict the test, the stricter the conditions and requirements of the test, the better. And actually, a huge problem is how to do these tests at home. Of course, in Russia, we, oh, we lack registration of these tests for accessory diagnostics. Overall, there are four such tests. Uh, FDA has issued recommendations to three of them. One of them is being in the pipeline for registration, two for DAC, two for Ventan. This is an outdated DACO platform, and it is now being changed, upgraded to a new one. And as you see, you can see different clones for each medication. The clone is different. However, the general opinion is that PDL positive uh, results are in uh, tumors with PDL1 over 1%, but these results actually generate a certain shock. If we tested the specimen with a different with a different test, can we imply these data to other tests? And therefore the blueprint program was launched to give answer to this question. In non small lung cancer, how do all these four tests combine and correlate? For pathologists who were trained to evaluate only one test, if we ask such pathologists to evaluate the percent of PDL positive cells in a specific cohort of patients, then what we see is that two DAC and two Ventana tests generate similar results, and it's only P142 clones, Ventana test, generates a different result. It has lower sensitivity in terms of positive tests and cells, but if we add the infiltrate, then the result is more or less similar. I think that these are preliminary results, but we see how close all these platforms are. In 33% of uh, cases, these tests have a positive, a reliably positive or a reliably negative result. But if the threshold is 1%, then the convergence is over 80%. And 
uh, distinguished speaker, you have ex exceeded the time limit. This is the last slide. Well, we cannot change the current recommendations, but there is a lot of hope and a lot of homework to be done in the future. To wrap up, I would like to say that the low specificity of PDL1 ensures that this is the only the start, the mere start of the history of the story, but it can carry a, a lot of promise because there is a correlation with uh, the response to immunotherapy.